So I think the number one question I get when it comes to Foundry and that I just see online is, what modules should I install? Unfortunately, there is literally no right answer to this question. You can look at any of my Foundry module videos. You can look at other people's module videos and you can find a general list of suggestions. But even then, it's all personal preference. If you go into any of my videos and go down to the comments, there's going to be three to five to 10 people who all say, oh, I don't use that module because I use X instead. It does this better. And that is perfectly fine. In fact, I encourage that kind of discussion because then it brings more modules to light and can help other people find modules that they want. But this doesn't help you <laughs> if you don't know what kind of modules are available or what to search for, which by by the way, right now there are 2,650 modules. So instead of telling you what is best, which if you want a list of what is best, here's one. It's for version 10, but some of these still work. Some of them I have replaced. So again, we're going to need to update this video. If you want an exact list, go watch that video. Otherwise, today I'm going to teach you how to figure out what kind of modules you should install. You can figure out which modules are good and safe to use for your Foundry game. So let's get started. <laughs> First, let's talk about setting boundaries, okay? <laughs> you want to ask yourself three questions. First, how many modules do you really need? Not a rhetorical question. <laughs> Two, how much automation do you want? And three, how much theater of the mind do you like to rely on during your games? Me answering these three questions, I like to have the minimal amount of modules possible. This is for several reasons. One, I don't want to have to update everything every time there's a, an update to Foundry, either the version or the game rule system. It just gets to be exhausting, things break, and then you have to go through and see which one is breaking what and manually turn each one on individually. It can get really crazy really fast if you have a lot of modules. So for me personally, I try to stick around 30 modules. This is not including things like adventure modules, like the Dragonheim one or the Pathfinder beginner box or D&D's Vandelver box. They tend to just provide maps and journal entries and that's it. I'm talking about 30 modules that are just used to enhance the game. For automation, I want combat to go as quickly as possible. I am one of those people who feel like D&D 5e combat takes forever and you have to either do something crazy as the as the DM to keep people's attention the whole time or you need to speed it up in other ways. Even while playing in person, I try to find ways to speed it up. Half of my games are in person and half of my games are virtual. So when it comes to the virtual side of things, I just want it to be automated as much as possible. When I play in person, I actually use Foundry for maps and therefore we're still rolling and doing all that. So there's no automation needed. And then the final question for theater of the mind, I like to have something in between. I like to be able to show visuals and show cool things. I like to have cool animations, but I don't want it to detract from any creativity that can happen at the table. I think sometimes if you provide everything, then players are less creative uh, because they already have the visuals. They're not thinking of things that you might not have mentioned that could be in the space or things like that. So I try to go for something in between. There are people who want it to feel more like a video game and you would probably want more of the automation, more of the cool effects, that kind of thing. I want some cool effects, but I don't care if everything is so immersive in that way. So these are my boundaries. You need to figure out yours but remember to be flexible. I have one player who loves using different modules and he's always suggesting stuff to me. I think for him, part of the whole aspect of playing D&D online includes making his character do cool things. So that's partially why I have as many modules as I do, but I love, I love being able to make that easier for my players to do. Those additional modules don't bother my other players as much. In fact, many of them think it's cool as well. So just remember to be a little bit flexible with your boundaries, but this at least gives you a starting point. Next, you're gonna have to listen to your table, whether you're the GM or you're a player watching this video, everybody at the table will have suggestions and and not all of them will be good, but it is important to hear, try to hear the underlying 
problem that they are trying to solve when they bring up a module. Things like, ah, I wish it were easier to roll dice on here instead of having to type it in, which they have a module for called Dice Tray. I wish I could pop out my character sheet so it's in a separate window. Pop out. I wish I could see both the chat and the turn order on the screen. Um, there's a module for that, but I can't remember the name of it. Write these suggestions down, of course, but before you start installing everything under the sun, you're going to need to do the next few steps, which I think are the most important things you can do and the whole basis of this video. <laughs> gonna need to research your modules. No one can do this step for you. Well, not really. Just because someone at the table recommends dice tray in particular doesn't mean that it's the best option. Instead, you're gonna need to boil down your needs, your table's needs into uh, essentially a sentence you can plug into Google. <laughs> I'm not saying, let me Google that for you, but kinda. Take whatever it is that they're trying to accomplish with that module, boil it down to a phrase or so, and then look for modules that kind of fit that phrase. Obviously there are plenty of resources out there. So let me just list a few for you. And I think these are the most common. Obviously YouTube, that's why you're here, right? <laughs> there are plenty of top lists for module videos, but this is not always going to give you exactly what you're looking for to fulfill a need. This is gonna be more for a general overview of what's available. You're gonna to wanna to look for whatever version of Foundry you're in. Current update is 11. So you wanna make sure you're including that in your search search or taking that into consideration if you're watching older videos because sometimes the module versions matter and we'll get to that shortly. Another resource though I hate calling it a resource is Reddit. <laughs> Anybody can post something on Reddit so you do have to really vet these suggestions. There's a whole Foundry Reddit that has people constantly asking this exact same question and getting replies. If you're looking for just general lists, you can go there. You can also probably type in any names of suggested modules and see what other people have said about them. So this is good for more for discovery, but also if you're looking for specific feedback on certain modules, it's a good resource. And then finally, and this is I think the most reliable of all of them, is to just join the Foundry Discord server. I'm in there. This is a great way to to ask about the modules, to see what people have been using. You can actually get in contact with people who actually develop modules. I know I have one player who has actually reached out to someone and they did a hot fix for the bug that we encountered at our table. A lot of these people who are making modules are individual creators and do this on the side. So do be patient with them, but um, that also means they're pretty responsive most of the time. Now, finally, let's talk about vetting your module choices. And this is the most important part of this video. If you didn't listen to anything else, turn on your listening ears now. <laughs> After searching the internet for the best choices, you have to make sure that they work, right? And there are several things you should do before you install them. So you need to make sure that it's actively being worked on or updated or maintained, that there are people providing support and that there are people answering questions or a tutorial of some sort. Like I said, a lot of people are actually on the Foundry Discord and they offer support there. There are also people who are just generally using those and have encountered bugs and found workarounds. So the Foundry Discord is probably the best way to find some of this information. Here's how we're going to check modules and we're gonna use Dice So Nice as our example because I think it's one that everybody kind of uses. In Foundry right now, we're gonna go to the add-on modules and we're gonna hit install. Yes, I know this is more than 30 modules. Again, not I don't use all of these, they're not all active. You're gonna hit install module and you're gonna type in whatever it is that you have researched or looked into. So we're gonna look at Dice So Nice because it's a good example. On each of these, you're gonna have a little box with a little arrow. You're gonna click this and it's gonna take you to a different web page on the Foundry website. So here it is. This is gonna provide you plenty of information to figure out if this is worth downloading. Up at the top, we have the version that it is verified working for. So this one here is verified working on 10 or 
later. So currently we're on version 11, but people have even verified that it works on version 12, which means that in the beta testing of <laughs> version 12 or alpha, whatever they're in, they have verified that Dice Nice works well with that. This is your first thing. You wanna make sure that your modules are compatible with whatever version of Foundry you are using. So we're looking for 11 or above. So this is good. Next, you're gonna see when it was last updated. So right here, it says last updated about a month and two weeks ago. That's good. Some modules might have a little bit bigger numbers, like three or four months, and that's also okay. We will look at a couple other things to tell us if that's an issue. But for right now, you wanna aim for a smaller number, yes, but don't freak out if it says three or four months. Now, if it says a year or longer, then probably don't want to use that module. Being updated frequently is good because it means that somebody is actively trying to keep this thing up to date. However, it can also mean that it breaks frequently and there's a lot of bugs. You want something in between very frequent and not frequent at all. <laughs> which is again, kind of your personal preference too. If you're okay with occasionally encountering bugs, it could be updating more frequently right now because of a recent update too. So if it seems like lately every module you look at is updating more frequently, there probably was a big change in Foundry itself and that has prompted everybody to update at one point. But next, we're going to go to the project URL. On here, there should be a project source box and you're gonna hit the project URL. Now this will take you to maybe a GitHub or a GitLab page. Now, if you are not a coder and you've never seen these pages, don't freak out. It's a lot of information to digest and you don't care about half of it. I'm gonna tell you right now. We do care about a few things. So again, we wanna confirm when it was last updated. We are actually, you can normally see that, I think this is GitLab. You can normally see that on the top for GitLab. You can also click on this button here and go to history and it'll tell you more in depth how often they are updating. So in December, they had a whole bunch of updates, but it looks like mostly it was language related updates. Probably not a big deal. But you can see here that about a month ago, they released a new version and merged it into the master code. So that's good. That means someone's regularly updating it uh, about every month, double checking everything. So that's, that's pretty good. Next, you wanna see if they have a tutorial, a frequently asked questions section, or a place to get support. First, we're gonna scroll down. Normally on this main page, they, for, this is GitLab, so you have to scroll a little bit and then you'll find really some links and tutorials, how to use it, how to install it, that kind of thing. This is good if you need to come back and just make sure something is working or you've encountered an issue, you can come here and figure that out. A lot of times too, they will have a section on here for feedback, support, something. So for them, they have a whole issue tracker where you can report bugs and stuff. In general, just looking at those few things, I think this would be pretty safe to download. I do know from experience that I've never encountered a bug with Dice So Nice. Let's go through these same steps for two other modules. So we're gonna do this again for a module that I know doesn't work anymore. And then we will do it for another module that will show you what GitHub looks like instead of GitLab. For an example of a bad module, so combat, oops, gotta spell it correctly. So here's combat carousel. You can see even right here, it says, support has ended. So obviously that would be your first key, but I just wanna show you what it might look like. So if you go to their page, again, at the top it says support has ended, but other things you can figure out, like there's not a lot of support down here, um, but up here, versions verified. So it says 10 plus, but it's really only plus because it's 10.291. Anything beyond that, most likely Combat Carousel does not work or could be buggy. And you see here, it was last updated about 10 months ago. I wouldn't install this, but if you go to the project URL, you can see this, this is a GitHub page. So you can see last year was the last commit. You can normally see that up here at the top, a commit me being like code change. This has been a, about a year, okay? Down here, you can see as well, the re latest release, April of 
2023. It is now March of 2024. So this one has not been updated in a while. Let's look at one more. This is tokenizer. So again, we're going here. It's verified for version 11 and it was last updated about four months and a week ago. Again, that's not necessarily a bad thing, especially if it's verified to work, but we'll go to the project URL. And this is why I suggest doing this. But when you go to the project URL, again, we're at GitHub, but you can see here a commit was made about nine hours ago. Now, whether or not this was specific to a bug or whatever, we could probably figure out if we go over here to the right and hit activity. That's just like the history button in the GitLab. And then you can see all of the different changes they've made. And you can see he's been pretty active. You know, this was February, this is January. So every month he's getting in here and updating it to some degree. Now, I don't know enough about code to say what any of these changes might be. <laughs> but it does look like a lot of these are different versions. Like he's updating minor things to this module. And if we go back to the main page, we scroll down, we have a whole wiki on how to use it, which is super nice and comprehensive. And then I know that because this is on GitHub, you can actually report bugs in GitHub by going to this issue area and you can hit new issue and report it. So I do know that there are some things in here. So I hope this video is super helpful for you. This will help you decide on what to install without me telling you directly install these things. But if you're looking for direct lists, I have a couple videos about modules that I've used in the past so you can get a feel of what is out there. The version 10 one has a couple I think that are no longer working. Combat Carousel is one of those, although there is a new version of Combat Carousel that does work. Regardless, a lot of those still work for me or are still ones that I try to find replacements for. And then I do have another video that will walk you through setting everything up from a GM's per perspective, from creating the world to running combat, everything you need to know. It's going to be a really lengthy one, but in there I will show off the modules that I feel are necessities. <laughs> and so if you're looking for something more directly saying install this. Also just want to remind people that I have members only. I'm actually doing a members only stream. Um, probably by the time this video goes up, but you also get videos as soon as they get uploaded to YouTube, which is normally a day ahead of everybody else. And then you'll also get other th cool things like a special chat with me. You get a lot of special stuff and I'm working on other special things, but would love feedback on the membership tiers as they stand.